And this thing is just loaded, loaded, I am telling you, loaded with clusters of grapes. This thing has really, really responded well. I am telling you, don't be afraid of pruning your grape vines, especially when they are nice and mature. Look at these clusters. They are just everywhere. This thing is just gonna be dripping with grapes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Buenos dias, buenos tardes, buenos noches. Whenever you're watching this video, I do hope you enjoy it. This is the Desert Southwest and this is April. This is gonna be our April vlog and our April tour of our backyard, orchard, garden, and vineyard. And I say that because we have added seven new varieties of blackberries and vines to our vineyard. So we've now expanded to our backyard, orchard, and garden and vineyard. So we've got a lot to show you. I'm just gonna try to zoom right through, try to keep the chatter to a minimum because there's a lot to show you. We've been propagating and things are coming alive. Man, it's been busy this spring. We've been last minute planting. We've been adding some things. We've been taking away some things. We've been doing some experimentation and those experiments are working. Grab a snack, grab a beverage. Let's have some fun. This is gonna be a lot, so keep up, all right? Make sure you stay to the last part of the video. We've got some surprises that we wanna show you. All right, let's get to it. So I just wanted to start this video here in the corner of our orchard and you can see things are coming alive compared to our other orchard videos we've been showing you over the last winter and very early spring. This is April. Today was 96 degrees in our backyard. Holy cow. But things are holding up with the early heat wave and we've got some cooling coming up. So that's always a good thing. You can see the new lights we've got down in here and we can see our new trees out our window that is getting covered up by our wonderful pomegranate that is waking up. We don't have any flowers on it yet, but we definitely have a ton of new growth. This thing was looking pretty scrawny over the summer last year. And man, this thing is waking up and it is turning into a massive bush. This is our wonderful pomegranate right next to our air conditioner is our fig tree. This is our common fig and it is waking up. It's got a ton of leaves that are starting to pop out. And man, these things, look at the size of these things. That is beautiful. I just wanted to get under here real quick and show you what's popping. There's a fig right there. There's another fig right in there. And there's another little fig right there. And those have started popping out on all that new growth that we've pruned. And yes, it's right next to our air conditioner. Hello, Daisy. So we did prune appropriately. That way we do get our air conditioner to get good circulation because that thing is going to be running full time this summer and it looks like daisy's going to come along and follow us throughout the orchard and right next to our fig we've got our strawberry guava and there are quite a few of these tiny little guavas that are starting to pop out all over the place right there there are just little tiny guavas all over the place and i hope that they stick because there are tons of these little guavas just everywhere you can see them all here and we are crossing our fingers that they stick this tree is about three years old now and typically that's when they do start popping out some guavas here's our pineapple guava right here it's uh it's actually recovering because it was dealing with some stress over the last couple of years but we did prune it we've got double scaffold on our pineapple guava we did lose a branch here it just got some sort of damage down at the bottom. That's our pineapple guava, and right next to it is our beautiful Santa Rosa plum. This Santa Rosa plum we planted in fall of 2021, and this is now spring of 2022, and she is looking beautiful. She is in full bloom right now, and we've got some bees all over her. And right next to our Santa Rosa plum, like I say in every single video, they say you can't do it, but we're doing it. This is our Honeycrisp Apple. Yes, Honeycrisp Apple here in the desert southwest. And it is just starting to come awake. We did place a graft here of an Anna Apple. And there she is. And that Anna Apple definitely took on that graft. This is the Honeycrisp Apple 
and right next to it man this thing is just in full bloom we have got a ton of pomona sweet lemons this thing is just loaded up with flowers and little tiny tiny lemons i hope a lot of these stick the first two years that we planted it it struggled because phoenix had the two hottest summers ever on record but this thing just plowed right through it this is our pomona sweet lemon and she is doing real nice she is getting pollinated she smells amazing if you know what i'm talking about you just love those citrus blossom smells and she is just going crazy look at all these little tiny lemons we are going to give them a fighting chance this year this is year four for this one and you can just see those dwarfing root stalks are just a relative term that's probably pushing the 10 at least 10 foot maybe 12 foot mark that is on a dwarfing root stalk pomoda sweet lemon and as we move on you can see debbie she was having a nice little nap didn't mean to wake you up hello little debbie you can see her in pretty much all of our videos and as we start on our western facing wall you can see everything's all nicely lit up this was a beautiful day it was 96 degrees but man we finally got our evaporative cooler going this is our dorset golden apple and it is wide awake and yep we have got some flowers and they are looking real nice we are hoping we can get some bees on there maybe we can get an apple but this is our first year in the ground we planted this early fall 2021 like i said this is spring 2022 it's been in the ground for about four or five months now right next to it and those are our fig prunings we are hoping we can get some roots out of those and plant some more figs and you can see all of the peaches in here this is our florida prince peach we planted this one also early february you can see the video i'll leave that link right there florida prince peach we planted we actually took out our red baron peach because it was just struggling right here rotted out the root stock but this one we definitely made that correction and this florida prince peach is doing real nice those peaches should be ready in may so maybe next month we'll be having some good peaches on this first year tree we are in growing zone 9b but i'm telling you you can grow these things we've got some subscribers that mentioned that they're in 10a down in florida and they love their florida prince peach of course you can see all of our koi are doing really good water is crystal clear super happy about that we just love having this pond in our backyard of course we did install this gate because we've got a one-year-old and she is crawling all over the place and we just wanted to add that extra security and you can see the new light back there we added some new lights that's our tangerine dream cross vine and right here down in our pot yep we do grow fruit trees in our pots this is our nagami kumquat now what's cool about these nagami kumquats is of course they're the world's smallest orange look at the size of that thing that is fully ripe this is april whoops there we go now what makes these things very unique is look at that shine on that that's just beautiful very unique thing about these is the rind itself is sweet and then the inside the meat part of it is tart let me get a bite of it real quick oh my goodness there's the inside of it that is delicious and now if you've had an evil orange and you get that occasional seed that's pretty much like how they are on the inside just a very small little seed on the inside you can swallow them it's not going to hurt you you're not going to have oranges growing out your ears well you might they do flower a little later than normal citrus they flower in the summertime and then they ripen a little later but man the hang time on these things are great as soon as they start turning orange you can just leave them on there as long as you want we've been enjoying these things all season long let me finish this oh yeah that's delicious in fact i'm gonna grab a couple more oh yeah we're gonna take a couple of these and finish the tour very first year on the graph this is the first leaf on these waddell pears and and right next to our waddell pears we've got our katie apricot and she is just starting to wake up not a whole lot of flowers on her yet but we do have tons of growth look at that branch is just shooting right out holy cow she's going to be a low branching tree and that is all right with our backyard orchard we do love that backyard orchard culture 
pots. This is kind of like the pot section. We've got a sprout from our ficus tree and we are training that to be a nice big tree. You can see our plumerias are doing really good. No flowers yet, but we definitely got a ton of brand new growth coming out of them. This one is a red flower and this one is a white flower and we are just hoping for some flowers this year. Maybe even some splits, split offs like we did last year with this one. This one took a nice little bifurcation on that trunk. And our salad bowl, looks like it needs to be watered. Looking, It's looking a little sad. But our salad bowl, that is our red leaf lettuce, spinach and arugula doing really good. We actually pull a lot of those out. There was just hundreds of little sprouts that took off and they just need to be watered every single day. Here's some red bell peppers. We took those things off as well. And then this is our Pakistani mulberry. We don't have any mulberries on this quite yet. We are hoping this is a female, but if it's a male, we are probably going to propagate it and graft on a female mulberry and see if we can get some mulberries off of this. This is just the second leaf. This tree was actually pulled out of the ground at my parents' house in Glendale, Arizona, and it was planted by a bird if you know what I mean. Just gonna keep this thing in the pot for the first year or two and see if we can get any mulberries to grow out of this thing. But we're hoping that this is a female and not a male and males are very hyper allergenic and we definitely don't want that. I think I am a little bit allergic to the mulberry pollen but you can see all that fresh growth. This is in the full sun. This is a south facing wall and this thing is just getting baked every single day in the sun and these Pakistani mulberries can handle that heat. They're doing just fine. And moving on, you can see our Native American blue corn. It is going crazy. You saw in the last video, last month of our orchard tour, we doing this in a pot. We got about six of them and they are doing just fine. We have grown these in pots before and this is the result. These are seedlings from our Native American blue corn and we are just doing it all over again and we're doing it right. We've got it very well fertilized and very well watered every single day, our Native American blue corn. And like I said, we are doing a lot of propagating. This is from our vineyard. This is, these are canes that we just planted while they were dormant, and it looks like every single one of them took. And these canes are our red Zinvendel, and we're just propagating them. Looks like this one, this one I actually put in the dirt while it was still alive, and this one is not producing anything which I think is very interesting. But we do have one, two, three, and four canes that when these were dormant is when we planted these in the ground. And it looks like those things just shot out some roots and they are definitely, definitely alive. We're gonna keep these in the pot this year and we're gonna be planting those in the fall. And you can see down here our red radish and we're not gonna be pulling this red radish out. In fact, let me see if we can see the radish right there. There you go. There's a couple of radishes right there. We're going to let these go to seed. We're going to let them grow up and flower. And hopefully the bees are going to go crazy and get us some seeds. And we're going to propagate some of our red radishes. I just don't feel like going to the store and buying new seeds when we can make our own seeds of our red radishes. Very cool thing about these red radishes is they're one of the fastest producing plants you can grow in your backyard. From seed to your table cycle. 28 days. And then over here we got some red flame grape sprouts. Look at that. One, two, three. We got we had a fourth one over here. A little experiments is our tropic sweet apple. This tropic sweet apple, like I said, is in the full blazing sun of the desert southwest of Arizona. And it is doing just fine. We just planted this in the fall 2021. And we defoliated it earlier. I'll leave that video right there of how we defoliated and added some extra chill hours, and we got a ton of flowers. They all just got done blooming. Right in there. There's a ton more flowers in there that just got done. Hopefully we get at least one apple out of this Tropic Sweet Apple, but that is growing here in Arizona, growing zone 9B. Then we got some tomatoes we propagated from one plant. We just trimmed off the branch of the tomato and we planted it and we got two of them. Look at these things, they are just taking off. They're propagating tomatoes without any seeds. That's pretty cool. Let's go check out our vineyard. We've added seven new varieties. So I just wanted to get down here at the very bottom here of our vineyard. Well, we had some really good sales and I just couldn't pass up a deal on all of these berries that I'm just about to show you. This is very exciting. We haven't had berries in our vineyard, but we're gonna do it. <clears throat> so every other plant 
is going to be a berry and then a grapevine down here in our vineyard. And I'm just about to show you that right now. I'll show you the varieties. But this is what I'm super excited about is all these berries. Do mulch these berries. We'll be posting that very shortly. So make sure you do subscribe and like this video. You've stuck around this far. Might as well give this video a nice like. So the way we've been planning these things is I do, I'm kind of OCD on how I like things to look back here in our orchard because when you plant things, they tend to be permanent and we like that. So we foresaw the future of what these things are going to look like and we strategically placed all of these berries and grapevines you can see there and I'll be explaining that in just a second is we planted berries, grapevines, berries, so on and so forth throughout the rest of the vineyard and you'll see that pattern because these grapevines they grow up huge and I'll be showing you that in just a second what those grapevines are but these grapevines grow up huge and they are going to grow be growing up this wall and they're going to be expanding right so it's going to provide a little bit of shade for these very sun sensitive berries and these berries are going to be growing underneath the shade of the vines so that's one reason why we've got berry vine berry vine and so so on and so forth this is the caroline ever bearing raspberry and you can see the sun sunburn already we do cover these things up during the afternoon because we saw that sunburn and ever since we did cover it up nothing else is burnt so we're gonna let this thing just baby so next up is the summer royale grape this thing was just about five leaves when we bought it and you can see the growth since we planted it so our planting techniques definitely do work all the fertilizing that we do and all the mulching that we do taking root and they are doing really good our chester blackberry finally came awake and it is doing really really good and then our princess grape you saw us planting that and it's doing really good in full sun and we have already thinned it out considerably and we have selected our the main vines that we want look at that we've already got some grapes producing this is a dave wilson grapevine first year in the ground I'm not too sure what leaf this is but you can see the stock on here that is a nice, very barky rootstock. Right next to our princess grapevine. Man, these things, I grew up eating these things in Idaho. These are the thornless boysenberries. We're growing them here in the desert southwest. And look at all that fresh growth since we planted these things. And our flame grape. This is our red flame seedless grape. And it is doing really, really good. Look at all that growth that's just coming out of it. We did prune this all the way down here. We did some selecting. And we pruned these things heavy. And you can see the growth in just a month's time. In just a few weeks' time, really. These things have already grown about four feet. And those are going to be our main scaffolds. And we are going to grow these in a cordon pruning. Stay tuned for that. And right next to it, man, this thing is just taking off. We prune this. In fact, I'll leave that video right there of pruning step-by-step step of our red Zinvendel. And this thing is just loaded, loaded, I am telling you, loaded with clusters of grapes. This thing has really, really responded well. I am telling you, don't be afraid of pruning your grapevines, especially when they are nice and mature. Look at these clusters. They are just everywhere. This thing is just gonna be dripping with grapes. This is our Red Zinvendel. Look at all the clusters, holy cow. So we've shown you berry, grapevine, berry, grapevine. We got double grapevines here. And then back down to the berries. That's just another thornless boysenberry and that thing is really taking off. We're gonna be a spallier growing them right along this wall, right underneath the grapevines. And right next to those boysenberries, this is gonna be the interlaken, I think I'm pronouncing that, interlaken grape. Not familiar with it at all, but we're gonna give them a try and it looks like they're already starting to take off since we bought them. We bought it right about there and this is all new growth. These are clearly an aggressive growing vine, which is good because we're gonna prune those things as accordingly. And you can see all the heavy mulch that we've got down here. It is just a thick layer. Look at this stuff, it's just decomposing. This is our Moringa mulch that we laid down here. And right down here, this one has been very, very, very sensitive. 
not a whole lot of damage there's a little bit of damage on this one you can see the damage there this is our triple crown thornless blackberry it was getting some sun damage we've got some dry windy hot days even more coming this is april 2022 this is just the beginning this thing's got to last through the summer into basically october is when we can start getting some relief and we of course i'm a sucker and i got a really good deal on some blueberries and i love blueberries who doesn't but we're going to be putting those things in pots they need a very acidic soil this is our bountiful blue blueberry it's from Montrovia. And it looks like we've already got some blueberries that have started to ripen. And we planted this in a pot, obviously. And we're going to leave that video right there of how we planted this pot and all the amendments that you've got to put into these blueberries. They love acidic soil. Our soil here in Arizona is about 8 on the pH scale. These want half of that. These blueberries want like a 4 or 4 or 5 on the pH scale. So we are definitely going to be keeping an eye on these things. We're gonna be babying them here in the pot. We're gonna keep them out of the sun, direct sun in that May, June, July sun here in Arizona. And this Thompson seedless, I'm telling you, look out because these things grow like weeds. Holy cow, we did this in a cane style pruning. But this is the second leaf and you can see already we've got some clusters here. We got a little tiny cluster right there. And then we've got another little cluster right there, but man, I'm telling you, this is just the second leaf on these Thompson seedless grapes. And I am telling you, they do really good. They finally responded really well with that neem oil. We posted that other video of how we use these that neem oil to get rid of our leaf hoppers. And they have really responded well. Here's another Thompson seedless right here. And like I said, this is just the second leaf and we're already getting grapes off of these Thompson seedless. And right underneath this grapevine is our Navajo thornless blackberry. It is struggling. I don't know what we're going to be doing with this one. We do have a little bit of new growth here. A little bit of new growth here. And a little bit of new growth here. I don't expect this one to survive. It definitely has some crunchy leaves. Uh, we're just going to be babying this one and monitoring it. We did get it at Lowe's. So we did keep our receipt. We planted it it responded really well and then all of a sudden we got our heat wave and it is not liking that but we are going to be giving it that rooting hormone that fish fertilizer and keep this thing out of the sun and hopefully these three spots of growth will start to take off and but that's our navajo thornless blackberry right next to it of course another grapevine this is our red flame grape this is a brand new one this is not one we propagated, but this is one we got at Tractor Supply. And look and see, we can already got some grape clusters there. I don't know if those grape clusters are going to hold, but we're crossing our fingers. But we just want some growth out of this new grapevine. You can see the stock on this thing is doing really, really good. You can see the brand new growth on that one. And down here at the very end, we've got our Heritage Everbearing Raspberry. It is struggling in the sun as well. You can see the crispy leaves right there. Uh, we've been covering that up in the afternoon as well, keeping that out of the sun, but it's doing pretty good. We got some good fresh growth on here already and then down in there. So we're hoping we get some raspberries ever bearing. You can see all of our great vines are doing really, really well. We're super excited about these. Look at this. This is just crazy growth back here in our vineyard. all these new blackberries and all these new vines and as we come out front this is our moringa tree we just pruned this i'll leave that video up there as well but we just pruned it and man it is just taking off it is looking really really nice we pruned this to encourage growth and man did we do that this moringa tree is about three years old and it was about 20 feet tall and we couldn't even reach most of the branches to harvest and eat the food that it provides. But you can see it is really doing really well and responding very well to our pruning. And you can see that pruning in that video. But that is our Moringa tree. And we are looking forward to some really good growth this year. And then right here in our corner, this will be the last tree. This is our Deppel Dandy Pluot, and it is waking up and it is responding very well. In fact, you can see some of the blooms right there. 
and it's looking really, really nice. This Deppel Dandy Pluot is Budwood from Edge of Nowhere Farm, and we picked this up at RSI Growers, and he put in a Arizona rootstock. You can see it right there. See where that little notch is right there? Here is the graft, and then that's the rootstock that does so well here in Arizona. This Deppel Dandy Pluot is gonna be a very vigorous grower. It's underneath this just nice thick layer of mulch that we provide here. This is our Moringa tree mulch that we've got here in our front yard. And maybe some pluots, who knows? We'll let you know if we get anything pollinated. But she is looking really good and we got a lot of branching coming out. So I do keep my promises and I'm gonna show you that surprise like I promised at the beginning. Here we go. All right, and here it is. Look at this. This is our desert gold three in one peach tree. And you can see it is just starting to wake up. I'll leave that video of how we pruned it right there. But we pruned about four or five feet off of this tree and it is responding very so we well. We did do some grafting of our desert gold peach. So this is our Saturn peach. This is our graft. And look at that. That is doing real nice. It's got a couple branches out already. And here is our Red Baron peach graft. And we've got another Red Baron peach graft right there. And another Red Baron peach graft right there. And then there's two more Saturn peaches right there. Those are two grafts. Right here and right there. Those are our grafts. So this is now a three-in-one peach tree on a desert gold peach. This peach tree this is going to be the fifth year back here in our orchard and it is doing really good. It gave us about 100 peaches last year and we are hoping for the same this year. We left a lot of budwood on there and that budwood is going to be producing all these flowers which you can see we got flowers everywhere. In fact it's just mostly flowers. This thing is just loaded up. But the bees have been going crazy and we are hoping for some peaches on our desert gold peach this year. Very cool. So you can see all the variety of fruit trees, grapevines, blackberries, even blueberries in our backyard orchard and garden and vineyard. If you've already subscribed, thank you for that. We do cherish you dearly. Please leave your questions, comments, concerns, suggestions in the comments section below. We love hearing from our viewers. If you're just passing by, please consider subscribing. We do talk about more than just fruit trees, vines, and blackberries. We talk about everything it takes to be successful growers in a backyard setting. We talk about planting, we talk about fertilizing, we talk about watering. We talk about all kinds of tricks and tips it takes for us to be successful backyard fruit tree, vines, blackberry growers, here in the desert southwest or any desert location near growing zone nine well you finally made it to the end if you saw anything that you liked in this video please hit that like button we do appreciate that and don't forget to subscribe that is a free and painless way to support this channel and if you're feeling frisky hit that bell icon well that way you'll be notified every time we send out these videos every thursday and sometimes tuesdays so from my family to yours thanks for watching mm -hmm.